Hello game makers, today we're going to mix up the survivor game template by creating our own attack upgrade. We're going to create an upgrade that gives our projectiles a piercing ability, allowing them to pass through multiple enemies instead of just hitting one. And then we'll add it to our upgrades list so that we can select it in the game. So first of all, let's create the piercing effect itself. We're going to go to object hero bullet, our bullet object, and in the create event we're going to set piercing to true. Later this will be set by whether or not we have the upgrade, but for now we just want to test it out, so we'll assume we have the upgrade. Next we'll go to object enemy, the parent object responsible for our enemy behaviors. First of all, in the create event we want to make a new array called immune to. So the nice thing about how our bullets currently work is they hit the enemy and then just get destroyed. But if we want to keep the bullet around because it has piercing, we have to be careful that the bullet doesn't repeatedly collide with the same enemy, dealing damage every game step. So this array is going to store the ID of any bullets that have hit this particular enemy once already, so they can't hit it a second time. So to do that, we next want to open the event for a collision with our bullet object. Remember, this event happens as an enemy collides with a bullet. So we first want to check if that bullet is already in our immune to array. We'll make a temporary variable called immune and set it to false. Then if the other dot piercing is true, meaning our bullet has the piercing value set to true, then we'll use a for loop to loop over our immune to array. With each entry of the array, we'll check to see if it matches other.id. If it does, then we'll set immune to true, as this bullet has already hit this enemy. Then we'll add and immune equals false to the start of this big if check, so immune has to still be false for us to bother running the rest of this event. If immune is true, the bullet will just pass on through the enemy. Then, where we would normally destroy the bullet that hits the enemy, we'll only do this if other.piercing does not equal true and else, if piercing is true, we'll add the bullet's ID to the immune to array. That's everything we need to do. So now, if a bullet has the variable piercing and it equals true, it will hit our enemy, add itself to a list of bullets that can no longer hit that particular enemy, and just pass through, still able to hit other enemies. Let's try it out. So running the game now, we can see that our bullets will pass through our enemies, meaning that if we line up our shots just right, they can hit any number of enemies in a line behind our original target. Very cool. Now, rather than just leaving this as a default behavior, we want this to be something the player has to unlock as an upgrade. So I'm going to go to our shooting upgrade script. Rather than use the asset browser this time, I'll press Ctrl T and type weapon underscore shoot as a way to quickly find this script called weapon shooting upgrades. Ctrl T is very handy in large projects for finding your way to different resources. Now firstly we'll add piercing to the top here as a new variable our shooting weapon has by default. The various attributes of the weapon are stored in a DS map, which is a game maker specific data structure that contains a series of named values. We're going to give our projectile weapon called global.shooting a new quality called piercing, and its default value will be false. If we scroll down in this script we can also find this function that compiles all the possible upgrades our shooting weapon can get when we reach the upgrade screen. Damage more bullets, etc. We're going to copy this one at the bottom here to make a new upgrade for our piercing ability. So at the start we'll make sure we don't already have piercing before adding this to the possible list of upgrades. And then we'll change the description to pierces enemies, the title to piercing, the key, which is the attribute this upgrade affects, to the piercing variable, and finally the amount, which is what we actually add to the value with this upgrade, to true. And there we have a new upgrade. Finally, to make this all work, we need to go back to our bullet object, and in the create event, instead of setting piercing to true, we'll set it to be global.shooting, open square bracket, question mark, piercing in quotation marks, close square bracket. This question mark notation is how you directly reference a specific entry in a DS map. This will mean when a bullet gets made, its piercing value is set depending whether or not we have the piercing upgrade. Let's try it out. I'll now have to play the game a little as our upgrades are selected randomly, so we just need to hope it shows up. And good, we got it on our first rerolls, that's very handy. So you can see our upgrade here, it's called piercing, says what it does, uh, we pick it and we'll find we can now shoot through enemies. 
I then went ahead and just kind of played the game a bit more after this because genuinely I think this upgrade is really fun. I just like trying to line the shots up to hit lots of enemies. It's quite cool. Anyway, that's how you make your own upgrade to a weapon. Where you go from here is up to you and whatever you can come up with. These templates are super flexible and hopefully you've seen just how easy it is to customize and extend. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time.